Good morning. This is module one, which is the basis for your exercises two and three posted in our classwork. Module one is about research process, analysis, and methods. Still a review and is still on the research side, but which is very related to our subject as an application of statistics in research. So the research process basically involves these major steps, definition of the problem, data gathering, data analysis, and verification of the results. Different authors, different books would feature the research process in detail like this, a statement of the problem, proceeds to review of existing research and theory so that you will know the gaps there are in the particular problem that you have stated. Then you're going to formulate study frameworks and determine appropriate methodology and research design. Appropriate it depends on your study, if it's quantitative or if it's qualitative. So you are now going to design the data collection instrument. And it will also be consistent with the research methodology that you established already. If it's quantitative, then your data collection instrument could be a questionnaire or an interview schedule. And after this, you're going now to go to the field, do your empirical research, you collect data. And when you have data, you are now going to analyze the data and interpret the data. If it's quantitative, there will be statistical tools that you need. If it's qualitative, then it's more on sorting the data and categorizing the data and so on. Then you proceed to presentation of the results. Your research is complete. Now the research analysis could be quantitative or could be qualitative. Of course, we, I've already mentioned that the quantitative from the word quantity, it answers the question how many. And from the word quality, it qualitative research analysis answers the question why. Now the research variable, can be an independent variable or dependent variable. One is the perceived cause, and the other one is the perceived effect. So as I've mentioned to you, for you to be able to easily remember, just think of ID. Cause, effect. Independent causes the dependent. Now, there is a third variable, intervening variable. So suppose logging in Google Meet is that independent variable that will cause you to be present or absent in the Google Meet. So your presence or absence depends on your logging in, the cause. But there could be an intervening variable like connectivity, which enhances the independent variable to have an enhanced effect or dependent variable. The interplay of the independent, dependent, and the intervening variable. So the research methods can be case study, sample survey, experiment, and feasibility study. So when to use this case study when objective is to observe a process in depth, a process involves systematic steps from start to finish. That's why anthropologists who usually use case study method, they are going to have a diary of their field work, which records uh, their actions, observations from uh, the morning or the first hour of the day up to the end of their field work of that day. And they're going to record that every day uh, during the field work, the duration of the study. 
the survey research, which is the popular method used in the social sciences, is used when objective is to have a general picture of people's awareness, knowledge, attitude, and behavior towards a thing, event, situation. Uh, so this usually involve the population and of course we can study the whole population but if we if the population is well defined we can just engage a fraction of that population which we call a sample which we are going to discuss in detail in the next modules now the experiment when objective is to determine the cause and effect of certain social phenomena under controlled conditions but even in the social sciences, we can do this. Uh, as I've mentioned, that there is an intervention. What is that intervention? Like there is um, information dissemination, or there is a lecture about something. So you can do a study before and after. And that would be uh, comparing the two timelines. A feasibility study when objective is to find out the economic, economic viability of establishing a certain structure or institution. So if you are going to put up a, a business in a certain locality, it is good if you know ahead if that particular business is what the people need in the area. Are they going to um, buy what you sell? Are they going to eat what you uh, offer there if that's food business or whatever. So there is a tendency for success, high, high probability of success if you conduct a feasibility study beforehand. 